All right, guys, so if you're new to the channel, I'm Lorenzo, this is 7th Gear. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, so I'm gonna preface this video and say that I'm being ultra nitpicky. There's hundreds of videos on YouTube about the things I hate about this car. A lot of times they're nitpicky and that just that's just because the car is so great and you really have to nitpick to find things that you don't like about it. So keep that in mind. I'm not just trying to get kick clickbait. These are things that I wish would be different on this car. Uh, so yeah, just walk with me. I'm gonna list five quick things that I dislike about this car. I'm not even gonna say the word hate. I know the video, the title says hate, but I'm gonna say dislike because ultimately, I mean, look at that. You can't beat that. So these are no real particular order. Probably the number one thing I hate most about this car is obviously the transmission. I'm not sitting here saying that it needs to be a manual. I'm not saying that. I think DCTs are the future. I think DCTs are fast. Um, I love driving them, to be honest with you. Don't get me wrong, a manual uh, is fun too. They're just different types of funds. It's a different type of feel, uh, but I'm not against either or. I do have a Save the Manuals t-shirt, but it's just because I'm a car guy and uh, I don't mind a DCT transmission. When I mean transmission, I'm talking about the gear select. And I know I brought this up in the delivery video. Uh, if you haven't seen that, it's gonna be up here. Uh, watch that after this video. I do not like having a gear change here. It doesn't feel sporty. It doesn't feel like I'm in a Mustang GT500. And it just doesn't feel right having a Cobra on the side of the car and <laughs> selecting the gears through here. Uh, I wish they wouldn't have done that. I know, like I said, it opens up the space here. I do love the interior of this car. I love the gauges. I love the, the switches. It's really fighter pilot-esque. I love everything about it other than this. And I wish they would have just put an, an actual lever gear selector. So like I said, with that being out of the way, for me, that's the number one thing that I, uh, you know, dislike about this vehicle. So number two, and again, ultra nitpicky. And keep in mind that I haven't really driven this car a whole lot. I think there's barely like 30 miles on this. Um, so I'm not really gonna get into the driving aspects of what I dislike. It does feel heavy, I will admit that. When you drive in standard mode, you know, normal mode, it does feel heavy. I think that's part of why it makes it feel comfortable. Uh, for anybody that's driven a Hellcat, you know that they're easy to drive every day because they're so planted, how heavy they are. And that has a lot of the same feel. And, um, like I said, I haven't really driven it too much, so I'm not gonna get into the driving aspects of what I dislike about it. But it does feel heavy, I will say that. It's still fast, but it does feel heavy. The second thing that I dislike about this is the fact that it doesn't have the 2018 up headlights. And I'm assuming that's because they developed this uh, before that came out. And probably part of the reason why too is because these are a little smoother and maybe more aerodynamic. And the 2018s, I think they have like a, a ridge right here. I think the 2018s look more aggressive. I think it would have looked better with the updated 2018 headlights. So that's complaint number two. Complaint number three would have to be the red calipers. I think it looks good in this spec. Obviously with the massive, massive calipers in the front. It looks really good the way it is. Especially, you know, with the red taillights. I'm, I'm particular about that stuff. I like things to match. Um, and I think it looks good with the red tail lights and the reflectors, even though I wish those were black. That'd be complaint number three for me. Uh, when ordering the C8, you know, you have the option to order edge red, which is a darker red, you know, a bright red, a yellow, and a black. Some people might not care. But for example, if I'm ordering a green car or a twister orange and I get red calibers, it might not be the best look or if I have performance blue or whatever and you get red calipers, it might not be the best look. Again, me personally, I'm not into having red calipers on every single color, I think. Honestly, if, if, if black calipers were an option, I probably would have spec this with black calipers just because it would have been stealthier. Um, that's just my personal preference. Again, guys, I'm nitpicking. I know you're probably gonna tear me up in the comments for the six viewers that watch this video. <laughs> But, uh, but those are just my, those are just my things right here. Uh, complaint number four would have to be this aero duct. Now, obviously you can see here, uh, you can see my hand coming through, but you can see my hand coming through here. And again, I know why they did it. I know there's a lot of engineering that went into the aero of this car. I've seen the charts and the graphs and all the stuff that they did with the aero and that's great. But these tires are really sticky and 
without having any PPF on the car right now, all this underneath is, is body color paint. And you can already see right here, there's little rocks. I drove the car earlier, there was, you know, actually larger rocks that were just sitting up on there. And I don't like that. I think, uh, I think it's great, especially for track use. But I wish they would have just put a little, a little cover that went here, maybe with a single screw, just to help block that if you're driving it every day or if you're just cruising around. But if you wanted to go to the track, you could take it off. That would really protect the underside of this body until you get PPF there. Uh, I know that Ford thought about protecting the paint because they have this little guy back here uh, on the rear quarter. And it's just enough to protect from any rock chips here because how sticky the tires are. But you have a huge hole right there. And you could have easily done something similar that pops in or screws in. Probably the fifth thing for me, and this is on a lot of vehicles that come out these days, uh, they don't have an LED reverse light. And I don't understand this because the 2013 and 14 GT500s, they have LED reverse lights. And they look so much cleaner if you're in reverse and they're just a nice clean white blue. It looks more expensive, it looks nicer, and they're a lot brighter. And these do not have that. So that's gonna be something that I'm gonna change soon. They're the nasty yellow old looking reverse light, halogen light. And I don't like that. I think that every car that comes out above the $40,000, $50,000 range needs to have LED reverse lights. It's not that hard to do, and it obviously probably wouldn't cost that much to do from the factory, but I wish they would do that. Um, I had to change it on my BMW, I need to change it on the Jeep. There's just so many cars that are out there that it just bugs me. It just bugs me, so that'd be another complaint. But again, guys, at the end of the day, like I said, if I'm nitpicking that hard about the design and the, and the styling, it means it's a great car, and it really is. I haven't driven it that much. Uh, to experience what the driving feel is like. I do know it feel. I do know it feels heavy. It feels comfortable. And I don't know if you want a comfortable feeling car to take you to the track. Um, I think it once you, once you once you get it out and get his legs moving, I think it'll really handle the way it's supposed to. But those are things that I would change if I wore a tie in the Ford Design Lab. Uh, but again, it's a great car. I can't really complain. Those are just nitpicky things. The gear shifter is the biggest to me more than all of them, but those are just small things that I think could really uh, make this car a whole lot better than what it is. And it's already up there. I mean, it's, it's hard to make it any better. It just looks so mean. It looks so prominent. And uh, I think it's, it's definitely one of those cars that are going to be uh, respected for a long time. So. So, um, I was editing this video and I thought about something that was actually a much larger complaint than most of these were. And if you optioned the Recaro seats in, that means that you could only select like the white trim around the seats. And I remember when we were ordering the car, and I might've mentioned this before in a video, but that kind of dictated the color that we chose for the exterior. Uh, I remember we had a lot of conversations about what to get the color. Uh, we had just picked up the, the 67 Eleanor and we thought about matching up, even though the grays weren't gonna be the exact same as uh, the Eleanor gray. Um, but we talked about a lot of different colors and ultimately went with black with white stripes because of the seats. And I know that's crazy to think that we spec the car around the Recaro front seats, but in reality, that's exactly what we did. I think at the end of the day, the results came out great. I think it really looks good together, tied in. But I think if you were to get a green car with black stripes and then you get the Recaros, it's kind of weird. I think if you were to get the orange with black stripes and the Recaros, it's kind of weird. I just think ultimately, if you were to get the Recaro front seats and you cared about the spec and the color uh, combination, you had to do black with white stripes. That and the gear shift selector were probably my two biggest complaints about this car as far as the aesthetics go. Um, and, you know, basic functionality. After driving the car later this day, um, it's still very heavy, but it's, it handles and it grips in the front end bites um, when you need it to. And it's really fast, it's loud, sounds good. Uh, cops obviously hate it because I got to take it later on this day. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry for interrupting the other part, but I just had to say that because it still would have bugged me uh, for not actually putting it out there. I don't know if anybody else feels the same. If you have a GT500 with the Recaro seats, or if you just agree with me, drop a comment. 
If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Uh, got a new car coming soon. I'm doing a rally here in a couple weeks. Really excited about that. So a lot of cool content hopefully coming. See you guys next time.